In this video, I want to go through an example where we need to determine the values of x for which the curve y equals x plus 1, x minus 2, x minus 5, and I've expanded it to x cubed take away 6x squared plus 3x plus 10, is concave, and for which values it is convex. So, first thing that we need to do is find dy by dx and d2y by dx squared. So dy by dx... Differentiating the expanded form is 3x squared take away 12x plus 3. And d2y by dx squared, the second derivative, is going to be 6x take away 12. Now we've seen previously that a curve is convex when the second derivative is positive. So if we put our second derivative to be greater than 0, so 6x take away 12 is greater than 0, then adding 12 to both sides, dividing through by 6, we'll get x is greater than 2. And it is concave when the second derivative is negative. So our 6x take away 12 to be negative... Adding 12 to both sides, dividing through by 6, we're going to get x is less than 2. So we know that our curve is convex when x is greater than 2, and concave when x is less than 2. So that answers the question, but my main point of this video is to really look at the curve and see how that curve plays out. So let's try and sketch it. So we have a cubic curve, so it starts at the bottom left, works its way to the top right, and it's going through minus 1, 2, and 5 on the x-axis. So, minus 1, 2, 5 on the x-axis. Okay. Now, what we're seeing here is that the curve is concave when x is less than 2. So for this portion of the graph, the curve is concave. So here we go for that portion of the curve. So if we're walk, working our way around from left to right, it's going around in a clockwise motion. And for that portion of the curve, it is concave. OK, so this is concave. And then continuing our way around, at 2, that is the point at which it changes from going clockwise to anticlockwise. So here, it's now going clockwise round, and that is when it is convex. OK, and it is that point at x equals 2 where it changes, where the second derivative changes sign. And cubic curves have this, um, have this property that actually uh, the point of inflection, this non-stationary point of inflection that we have here, where the curve changes from being concave to convex, or convex to concave, it's going the other way around, that point is also uh, a point of rotational symmetry for the curve. So cubic curves have the property that uh, if you rotate them about that point of inflection by 180 degrees, then uh, they will map straight onto themselves. So it's nice to kind of like see that cubics have this facility. Um, and also you'll see it when you're evaluating the second derivative as well. So a key example of that is if you want to look at the stationary points, for example. So if you looked at the stationary points, so if you found when dy by dx was equal to 0, so if you solved that, 3x squared take away 12x plus 3 equals 0. So let's just bang that in. So 3 minus 12, 3. We get, so when dy by dx is 0, this point is uh, 2 minus root 3, and this point is 2 plus root 3. 
If you substitute those two points into the second derivative, so let's try it, d2y by dx squared. Let's substitute in 2 minus root 3 first. Okay, so 6 lots of 2 minus root 3, uh, take away 12, is minus 6 root 3. And if you put the other stationary point in, so 2 plus root 3, you get 6 root 3. So what you'll find is that if you uh, put the uh, stationary points into the second derivative, the value that you get here will always be the same, but you'll have plus minus. One will be positive, one will be negative. And that is a feature of the cubic curve due to its symmetry.